Welcome to Garage Engineer, I'm Dennis. In the past couple months we've seen a big uptick on subscribers and viewers to the channel, so I always like to uh, take a moment just to welcome everyone who's new. Uh, I guess there's always a chance there's a, a new person watching the video, so welcome. What we like to do here is just do fun things in the shop, kind of like just hanging out on a Friday night with your buddies and working on different projects. So that's why you see a lot of different varieties of projects from small engines to vehicles to welding to woodworking, CNC, so a lot of different things. Um, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, if you like this video, uh, you can check out the other videos that we've got. Uh, one of the more popular ones is the uh, seven and a half foot dinghy we made out of two sheets of plywood and a little bit of other supplies. That's been lots of fun. But to get going, today's project is getting towards the holidays and things tend to slow down uh, work-wise on the uh, commercial side of things. So I like to do little projects that uh, I put off throughout the year or something that sparks my interest. Um, typically I don't videotape the smaller projects because I do it just more for me. But today I wanted to show you a project, uh, one of the little projects I do. So a few days ago we had the Christmas party for our local chapter of our wood turning club. And I won this as one of the raffle prizes. Uh, everyone got, you could buy tickets and then they had a table full of uh, interesting uh, items. And uh, this was one of them. This was, came from an older gentleman from the club. He donated uh, one of his aprons. Uh, and I thought it was really interesting. I like the texture of it, uh, how soft it is. It looks like it got a lot of use uh, at the beginning, and it looks like it was kind of put up. Uh, you can see the fade marks of where it was folded, and some of it got sun and some of it didn't, but that's fine. I, like, I still like the texture of it. I'm always torn. I like old things, and I like new things. I like the new techie gadgets that come out. Uh, I love the progression of how things are coming along uh, in technology new smartwatches, phones, and all that, camera gear. But I also like the old stuff. And I also like trying to get old stuff working uh, that's still usable because the older items are always uh, easily, more easily repairable than some of the newer items. So I like to take older items and if I can fix it and make it usable at the shop, I think that's wonderful. And this apron is one of them. It's got, let's see how many, it's got two big pockets and just a tie string that goes around the back. Kind of a butcher cup apron. Now I'm going to be using this a lot for more wood turning than actual woodworking projects. So there's a few modifications I want to make. One thing that sits a little too low, uh, wood chips tend to fly up and get into the top here. So we're going to raise the neck and sew it up a little tighter so it rides a little higher on the chest. And also with anything with pockets, uh, and wood turning, you're going to get lots of wood chips in here. So I'm going to make a flat that goes across the front here. And then uh, for smaller items like pencils or anything like that, I might put a little front pocket right up top here. Now looking at the overall construction here, um, actually I see, I thought there was only two pockets. There's actually four pockets. There's two more on the sides here, which is great. Um, look at this construction. I don't see any tags on here, so I can't tell if this was homemade. I think it was. I don't think this was commercially made, but whoever made it uh, did a really good job. It's very well uh, constructed. It's double stitched and uh, they reversed the uh, stitching when they started each row to lock in the, uh, the lines. So I can tell that this was uh, done, uh, put a lot of care was put into this. So the next thing we need to decide is how we are going to uh, attach, well first we need to decide the material and then we'll attach the layout. This is some, um, they're not scraps, but these are sample pieces for a, a design company that my wife got uh, from her mother who worked at one. And um, just having to decide, what I like about these is these are good pieces these were used as samples so the client can decide what type of uh, material they want to use on their like couches or pillows or whatnot. And I think the style goes back to the early 1900s. Uh, this is more, I think this called this gingham. Uh, this looks like a picnic table. But what I like about this, same coloration, but this has the look, let's see if we can find a good one kind of like the old uh, millwrights would wear their shirts, dress shirts would have these designs. So I think we're going to go with these kind of striped designs. 
Now, what color would look good? Do we want to go completely contrasting, or do we want to pick something that kind of blends in with a little bit of detail on it? So the base material of the apron is kind of a brownish color, and they used a red thread to uh, attach everything. So I think we're going to kind of go with that theme, something with a little bit of red in it as an accent. And I found these two pieces right here. We've got white cream color base with some red, or we've got a tan with the red uh, threading in it. I think the cream is a little too bright. I think we'll stay with the neutral tones just to kind of be more uh, so it doesn't like blare out uh, and wash everything out. Uh, I think we'll go with this one. I think that's yeah that's green. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. Now are we going to want to do the stripes that way or turn it around this way? So I think I've decided I want the stripes to go vertically. Um, and as you can see, the material is not long enough to cover all the way from edge to edge. So what I think I'm going to do is, uh, that's okay, I think we're going to leave the edges open for two reasons. One, it's going to be wrapped around on my side, uh, so I don't think as many chips will get in there. But two, it will give me an easier access to stick my hand kind of up under the flap and then into the pocket. So I think the width is alright. We'll just have to figure out the length. I mean, we're not going to make it flat too long, maybe halfway down the pocket. And then whatever remaining amount that we have, we'll use that for the uh, pocket that's going to go up top. So we'll just have to uh, figure out a design of how, what we're going to lay out and what we're going to use. So for the pocket up top, I think we're just going to have three little slots. One's for a pencil, one's for my center punch, and then this is just an awl that I use uh, just to poke holes or to... Um, if I can't find the center punch, I'll just use the all, all to make my center mark here. So I think we're just going to make a square piece about that tall so we can easily grab things out of the top and then just sew down the middle of them to make little pockets um, to hold it in there. I think that's all. We're not going to put a pocket for pat, a pad of paper or anything like that. We're just going to keep it kind of simple up top here. So that was the top that we just sewed. Now on for the sides, I'm going to triple, actually we're going to cut, let's cut, that was the top, so let's cut this down. We want it to be about, I think we decided seven and a half inches finished length, so we're going to cut it down probably eight and a half just so we have enough room or nine inches if we have plenty of room. So let's cut that next. So now that we've got this cut, we're going to do a, a double fold. So uh, we're going to fold it over once and then fold it over again. And that way it will give us a clean uh, edge. And the rough edge won't be sh will be tucked inside here. So let's fold that up now. And then our finish at measurement, we want to be at seven and a half inches. So we'll take that. We'll measure it. And we'll pin it right here, seven and a half inches. And we'll keep doing that all the way down so we get a consistent length. I've seen some machines that fold this over automatically in the commercial setting, and they're pretty cool. But when you're at home, you've got to do it all by hand. It takes a little longer, but we're not doing production work, so it doesn't really matter how long it takes. We just got to get it done. Now I want you to watch. So here's our pins. Uh, some people, as they go, they pull them out, but let me show you a little trick to save you some time. So here's our pen. Watch it as we're sewing. We're not going to pull it out. We're just going to keep going. So you see that? Sewed right over it. So that's going to save you a lot of time. I, when I saw that little trick, that saved so much time than having to stop, pull the pen out, 
and then continue on. You just keep sewing, take the pins out later. Don't even worry about it. Um, most likely the needle won't hit it, and if it does, it'll just slip right past it. So because it's so small, so keep that in your uh, bank of tools there. So let's keep on going. Alright, to finish it off, we're just going to go do some back stitching. And then we're going to do two rows. So we're going to take another route going down just to make it lay flat. So let's continue on forward. Now I'm going to stop the needle into the material so I can lift the foot up. And then we just spin it. And that way it keeps it all kind of in line there. Put the foot, put the foot down. We're going to go backwards get where we want to be lower the needle down into the material and then we can just spin it around put the foot down and here we go now we'll just back stitch it lock it up and we are done all right, flip it over here. Perfect. All right, so now what we need to do is we are going to finish the edges off the same way. We're going to do a double fold here just so that they're clean like that. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll bring you back. It's the same process as before. Now that we got both ends uh, finished, what we're going to do is split this into two separate flaps to cover up half of each side of the apron. So I'm just going to cut it down the middle, finish the edges off like we did everywhere else, and then we'll be ready to sew it onto the apron. So we got our two pocket flaps done. So for our next magic trick, we are going to do the chest pocket. So we need to cut a piece of material six and a half inches by four and a half or five and a half inches. All right, there we go. So we'll just clean up the edges, but we'll sew them over. I think we'll just sew them over once. Uh, we'll just do it like that, do a fold, and then we will, uh, but the top we might do a double, make it a little bit thicker, but the bottoms we'll just do, or the sides and the bottoms, we'll just do a one fold over. And now for the pocket, I think we... Uh, let's see, what are we going to do? Um, I might put it at a slight angle. Let's give it a little detail. Kind of like that. Let's get it pinned up. Alright, I think we're ready to sew on the apron. Alright, so let's see, here are our pockets. We'll get our flaps out. And we want them kind of like that and something like that we're not worried about the edge here we just want to get the majority of the pocket here and you want to leave enough room up on this top part here so that uh, you can get your hand up and in there so it might move it up just a little bit more because if you lift the flap up and you don't have much room between the bottom of the stitch and the top of the pocket you won't have much room to get your hand in there so I think I'm going to raise it up to about right there. Alright, we'll pin it up and then we can sew them on. So 
So I think this is good placement. We just got the, the pencil pocket uh, pinned, and I just wanted to take a look to make sure everything looked how I wanted it. That looks good, so let's get it on the sewing machine and sew it up, and then we'll sew the division lines for the pencils and all the other things we're going to hold up there. Well, there you go, there's the pocket. So now we just need to uh, get our pencils and our punch and stick it in there and we can figure out the, the where we want to divide the pockets into. All right, just like we did before, we're gonna go backwards and then forwards. That's one. We'll do it again here. We'll go backwards. One more. Here's our all. We're gonna make this the all one small, and then we'll have kind of a bigger one right here in the middle. Let's cut our thread here. And there you go, we upgraded our new to me apron to make it more woodworker friendly and wood turning so that we don't get wood chips in the pockets. The flaps come up easily and we get our hands into the, our apron pockets. And then up here we've got our pencil and yes I know the whole punch or the uh, center punch was upside down but I was using the body as the guide so to make it more square but it would be down most of the time. Got a pencil and we got two more spots for two other items. So really close. Um, to get to everything. If this inspired you, I hope you try something new. So it's not something we do a lot here on the channel, but it's something I wanted to try while we had this downtime during the holidays. So let me know what new projects you're doing down in the comments below. See you next time. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creative. Till next time.